Alright, good evening everyone. This is Illinois Stormwatch and uh, USA Severe Weather Network. We're doing a uh, joint multimedia briefing here uh, regarding a uh, expected um, severe weather event heading into the Mid-South. This includes parts of southern Illinois, southern Indiana, and Arkansas, uh, Louisiana. Parts of the, Again, generally this includes much of the uh, middle and lower Mississippi Valley and also extends into the um, eastern Tennessee, into parts of Georgia, and into uh, central Kentucky as well. Uh, this is Monday's outlook, so um, so again, uh, we may see some severe weather heading into um, Monday. So again, um, especially those folks along the Ohio Valley and to the lower Ohio and Mississippi Valleys, this is an area of concern where we have this enhanced risk. It is possible we, we may see some upgrades here from the Storm Prediction Center to moderate uh, categories because uh, this was issued well in advance. However, uh, I would not assume so immediately, but uh, let's check our model runs. Unfortunately, since I do not have um, a portable computer or um, a traditional computer setup, I have to use my phone here, so it might be a little harder. So it would be cool if you guys bear with me here. I could go live outside of the office of that so again what we're watching here is this low right here it's going to bring some uh, moderate to perhaps heavy rain and some strong winds heading into a sunday however this is not the exact weather system that we're looking at we will be watching uh, this trough right here it's going to um bring with it a, a cold front that will potentially move through um Again, the lower Mississippi Valley, that is what we are watching. And then, again, that trough will intensify. Again, it's this one right in there. So that's a 500 millibar trough. We're looking at a surface trough that will potentially make its way. So it's this low right here. It's going to generate into uh, Kansas. And again, as we head into Monday afternoon and uh, into Monday evening, that is when precipitation will start to generate along this front. And then as we can see, heading into um, uh, Monday around midnight, looks like the uh, main severe weather threat would be um, in the late evening into the overnight hours, according to um, these models. And again, this does bring uh, precipitation around the uh, just east of the Mississippi River, again, midnight, Monday night into Tuesday, it's possible we may see a few thunderstorms again in parts of southern Illinois. And what I'm checking out here, there's again a light to heavy precipitation gradient in uh, the area just ahead of this uh, heavy rain band. Again, this is a longer term model. We'll see if we can get some shorter term models involved here on our stream here in just a few minutes. But again, uh, just looking at the overall setup again. Heading into Monday evening, that is when things are really going to start to uh, ramp up in terms of uh, thunderstorm coverage. We'll look at some of our um, generalized surface instability here. Okay, I, I wouldn't want me to select the first option there, but this is what we're watching here. We're watching for Cape values over 1,000, and we'll, we will be in... A, a marginal sheared environment in our part of the, um, in uh, again, parts of southern Illinois and to the lower Ohio Valley. But once we get further south into the Mississippi Valley, we're going to be watching for this trough, uh, or an, um, excuse me, a, a jet winds coming from the Gulf of Mexico around 850 millibars. Uh, those are the um, arrows you see in green. Again, those are the, um, those winds are out of the, um, the west southwest and again those are going to give us some of that sufficient um that's going to give us some sufficient wind shear and again looking at those surface winds uh those are the um wind barbs that are in white Th those are going to be lighter at the surface but uh again just looking at a um, gradient um shear there so again uh surface winds out of the south uh, almost out of the south southwest, but again the um, the jet winds um, from 850 millibars are from the west southwest. So again, that's going to be a um, 
that's going to be perhaps a quite a sheared environment. And then uh, I, another thing I want to see here is the um, uh, 500 uh, millibar winds. See where, uh, just to show you where our jet stream is aligned, and it's the exact same areas where that outlook is, uh, multi generally. And looks like we may see some Pacific moisture um, come into the region in addition to all the low-level moisture coming from the Gulf that we are already receiving with those jet stream winds that I'll go ahead and take a look at for us here. And it looks like they, again, will be quite strong and uh, almost due from the Gulf of Mexico. And that will give us, again, that chance for... Um, these storms having the potential for some uh, moderate to occasionally heavy rain at times, so uh, it would be no surprise to find that being an issue. And uh, again, I, I want to go ahead and take a look at a few soundings here. Again, um, once I get a, a portable computer set up or um, something that I can use to, again, use radar scope or Gibson Ridge on, just one of those... Um, Things and it'll be much easier for me to type out these bulletins and give a, some more call to action statements. Uh, we'll go ahead and again, just check out, uh, again, this is part of the enhanced risk area where the sounding is located. Again, the enhanced risk from the Storm Prediction Center. What we want to look at here is this photograph, and it doesn't necessarily seem that there's too much shear with this from zero to one kilometers. Uh, this is during the overnight hours, so again, it looks like uh, this is when there is more of a slighter threat for severe thunderstorms in that general area. And uh, I, I'm going to have to jump into some shorter term models here in just a minute here. But again, just to get a, a gain an idea of what we can expect in terms of um, how much instability we need here. Uh, we're, we are at 969, right around that 1,000 millibars. But we're looking at some 34 knot shear from 500 to 850 millibars. Uh, again, that is the increase of wind speed from uh, 850 millibars to 500 millibars. This might be uh, this might sound like uh, something you guys don't know what that means. It's it's how far up in the atmosphere. The pressure is 850 millibars, so the altitude could vary. Um, however, this sounding website does not show the kilometers uh, or how high it is in the atmosphere. Pivotal weather does. Um, this is tropical tidbits, but uh, again, it just this is a, just to gain a basis of what we can expect. Again, 34 knot shear from 850 to 500 millibars. And again, that is going to... Um, bring us that convection, it's going to, again, that gives us some uh, additional instability in those high levels of the atmosphere. And again, looking at our temperatures uh, near 70, uh, yeah, we will be in the 70s uh, further ahead of this front. So again, we're going to be watching for those warm and perhaps humid conditions. Dew points look to be in the 70s, or, or the uh, 60s, uh, glad it's uh, I'd have to take a look at the dew points map. We're probably in the upper 60s, possibly a few dew points near 70. Would not be surprised to see that being the scenario here. However, as we increase in altitude here, we can see that this uh, model sounding does show, um, again, weaker instability. Again, this is not, um, again, this is not the shorter term model, so it's not necessarily showing everything in exact detail yet. Um, once we get our um, high ra resolution rapid refresh models uh, depicting the exact scenario of what is expected in the short term, we can uh, go ahead and give some more details of what is expected. So again, uh, we are in an unstable air, ma air mass, and if there is more humidity, um, as these storms move through at the upper levels of the atmosphere, that is what we want to watch uh, when it comes to a hail threat with a few of these storms. So again, just um, that's what we're looking at there. But again, really what I'm concerned about is the wind shear parameters here. So again, near the surface, again, the winds are out of the south. Uh, again, the um, it could be varying direction from south 
east or east south or south southeast ahead of the front. But again, once the front continues to move through, we will see that uh, uh, wind shift more to the um, southwest and um, and further from the west behind the front. But again, as we head further up uh, near 850 millibars right here, again, we, we are seeing that abrupt wind shear in our atmosphere. And again, the winds are going to be much stronger uh, just within that... Um, zero to uh, within three kilometers of the atmosphere, possibly a little higher, depending on which part of the atmosphere has that 850 millibar shear, what exact altitude. But again, just saying nonetheless, this looks like a um, classic, uh, like a very classic setup for um, severe thunderstorms. We may see some tornadoes with this. Um, again, our risk area is again around the lower Mississippi Valley. I want to go ahead and show you guys that risk area once again for Monday. Again, this includes much of Middle Tennessee, West Tennessee, and now the website wants to refresh on me when I did not prompt it to. Um, again, it's this area, again, central into northern Mississippi, northwest Alabama, and, and, uh, uh, the lower Ohio Valley, again, parts of uh, central and western Kentucky, um, this looks like it may um, lift a little further north into southern Illinois, if it does, uh, depending on if uh, more confidence does exist uh, with the shorter-term models. This also does include the Missouri Boot Heel, parts of eastern Arkansas, um, parts of Louisiana. But again, a slight risk does exist for parts, again, southern Indiana, uh, southern Illinois. This is generally south of Interstate uh, 64, but um, more south of Highway 50, because it does include parts of a, a small tidbit of the um, Lincoln, Illinois County Warning Area, or the National Weather Service in Lincoln, because we did get our uh, Twitter applet activated <laughs> for that. Looks like parts of central and much of Kentucky generally. Again, same for Tennessee. Alabama looks like we're um, generally northwest of Interstate 59, but that risk does carry on further south toward the like areas such as Monroeville, uh, possibly Montgomery, uh, Anniston. Again, it's that general line heading northwest. And uh, you can see that area in yellow where we do have that slighter risk. And then heading into much of Mississippi where we do have that slight to enhanced risk. Also areas of Louisiana, eastern Texas, uh, much of Arkansas, that um, area excluding Fayetteville areas uh, around northwest parts of the state and into Missouri as well, um, generally south of Highway uh, Interstate 44. Um, again, I'm just trying to approximate popular geographical boundaries here. Um, again, I just want to uh, reemphasize here that we do have a classic, classic setup for um, severe thunderstorms that could produce potentially all modes of severe weather. Um, I, I would have to continue to take a look at our supercell composite indexes, um, which I'm pretty sure that with this setup we may see some higher values. So, uh, again, this is a precursor where we may see some significant severe weather with that chance of um, tornadoes, some strong. Uh, we may see some of the tornadoes on the stronger side. We may see some very high straight line winds. And also, uh, should any of these become supercells, we will see some embedded uh, larger hail sizes, potentially up to the size of baseballs. Uh, would not surprise me, uh, depending on how these ingredients all come together. And again, in this orange shaded area, I would be the most concerned about seeing some of these uh, storms becoming supercellular, and they will become multimodal. So again, uh, just continue to follow later forecasts. We will continue to um, update you guys 
uh, as this risks unfolds. And again, I just want to go ahead and take a look at some of our uh, shorter term models once again, just to show you. Um, okay, this is this is already showing. A, yeah, the latest model run does not go all the way there yet, so we have to use some of our longer term models.